Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel and to the epic gaming world of wrestling sports entertainment. I'm your host, Chris Phoenix, and today we are diving back into our playthrough of WWE 2K4's My GM Mode. But before we step back into that ring of titans, make sure you're locked in for the long haul by subscribing, ringing that notification bell, and of course, laying the smack down on that like button. This way you won't miss a single second of the electrifying excitement. Now without further ado, let's jump back into the digital squared circle and experience the mayhem together. Get ready for body slams, high flying action, and an unforgettable journey through the world of WWE 2K24 as a general manager. Are you pumped? Because I sure am. Let's hit that play button and start the show. All right, first things first, let's catch up on where we are at the moment. So I am currently playing Mick Foley as my GM with the WCW brand. I've got Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man, in charge of SmackDown because to me that just seems appropriate. And then we went ahead and put Adam Pearce in charge of Raw because that's where he currently is and I really wasn't sure what other person I wanted to be in that position. So we just went with the current GM. Right now, this is the current WCW roster that I have from the draft in the first episode. I've got Finn Balor as my World Heavyweight Champion for WCW. I've got Alexa Bliss as my Female Champion. I've got Kofi Kingston as my Heavyweight United States Champion. Rhea Ripley, one of the top talents for WCW as a contender for the women's belt. I've got Karrion Cross as probably one of my main contenders for the heavyweight belt that Finn currently has. We've also got Braun Strowman, who would also be a strong contender for that as well. But I believe Braun is going to be going after probably Kofi's. Now, even though they are both faces of the company, I think that would be a pretty good matchup. I also drafted Dexter Loomis, and I made him part of a tag team with Dragunov. We've got Zelina Vega. She's part of a tag team with Zoe Stark. I've got Damian Priest because I think he's going to be a top talent in my company. Just not sure what I'm going to do with him yet. I'm thinking about a tag team with someone, but I don't really have anyone to mix him with. So we may look at the talent scouts again today. Zoe Stark down here, which I also mentioned, she is part of the tag team with Zelina Vega. And again, I'm most likely going to butcher this name, though I have been watching some matches with him lately. We've got Ilya Dragunov, which, I mean, I think this guy is pretty cool. Um, I had heard that he was the NXT UK champion, I believe, maybe about a year ago, so ago. Uh, he's also just been the regular NXT champion, I think, too, from watching just some stuff on, uh, just like YouTube. I haven't actually watched NXT. It's not a show that I specifically watch. I'm more of the SmackDown Raw and the the PLEs, but I think Dragunov, I teamed him up with Dexter Loomis. I think that's a pretty good tag team. It's not greatest in the world, but with what I have to work with, I think that kind of works. I also picked up Zia Lee. I thought she would be a great character to have for my roster. Not sure what I'm going to do with her yet. Uh, I'm kind of thinking maybe she needs to be a tag team. So I'm looking at my tag teams that I picked up and I don't really have anyone to go against them. I've got one male tag team and one female tag team. So I need to set up some competition for them. And of course, I also have Ivy Nile down here. Again, not sure what I'm going to do with her just yet, but I think I may want to try to start a rivalry with her and Rhea Ripley. I think that could be interesting. Ivy is another one of those characters that I just don't know a whole lot about. So I'm going to try to dig in to some YouTube matches and just kind of get a feel for the character themselves. Before we book our first show today, I want to take another look over here at Talent Scouts. We did this a little bit in the first video, but now I've kind of got an idea of where I'm wanting to go with these. So I see here that from my last scout, we have Valhalla. And I'm kind of just off the top of my head, I'm thinking could Valhalla and Zia Lee make great tag team? I think so. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to pick her up for about five weeks or so. We'll try it out, see how things work, and then go from there. Now I'm going to send my talent scouts out and we're going to try to find some male talent that would be great for our tag team here. Uh, maybe with Damien. So I've already set it to Renowned Stars level 10 to 14. We're going to go down here to Gender. I'm going to set that to Male. And then let's go ahead and do a search real quick and see what pops up. Actually, that's something we're not going to be able to do because I kind of forgot that I 
need talent scouts themselves and we used them all in the first episode so there goes that idea for this show let's take a look at my power card inventory currently i only have three we've got classically trained cactus jacked and the best offense Coming back over here to our homepage, we do have a commissioner goal for the week, which is to ensure that Rhea Ripley cuts a promo for the week. If we were able to do that, we would get the Get Schooled 3 reward, which is, isn't bad. Select a superstar in your roster to immediately gain 30 ring XP. 30 ring XP, that's pretty good. So we may go about that. I'm not sure yet. For our season challenges, this is what we've got to do. We need to resolve five rivalries with a title match. That shouldn't be too hard to do. Uh, surpassed 300,000 in the bank. It looks like we've already completed that. 600,000, completed that. Uh, book five shows where every match has a different match type. Interesting. Uh, then book 10 shows with all promo slots filled. Book 10 shows with a charity promo. Book 10 tag team matches. 10 shows with a self promo. So most of these should be easy and we should be able to get these pretty good. It is week one. We've got four shows to go until we get to Hell in a Cell, which... Uh, I can't wait for that. That's I've got some thoughts for that that we are going to try to get into. Heading over to our show logistics now, we've got $500,000 here. So I think what I want to do is we're going to go ahead and upgrade from a high school to a concert hall just right off the bat because I think that's going to be much better for us. It's going to give us a plus eight on our show quality. We're going to upgrade our capacity from 1,000 to 2,000. Ticket prices are going to go up by a dollar and it unlocks the submission match type. So that's the one cool thing they've added this year is as you upgrade your different assets here, like concert halls, uh, from like arenas to stadiums, and things like that, you are going to be unlocking different kinds of match types as you move forward. So for example, if we were to go to Wrestling Center, we would unlock the backstage brawl. The arena unlocks an ambulance match. Looking at crew, we've currently got just the basic road crew, but if we were to upgrade to the backstage crew, that would unlock the false count anywhere match type. I gotta say, I really love these new gameplay elements that are in this right now. All right, let's get started booking our very first show. WCW is back, baby. All right, for our opener, we're going to go with, it's going to be a title match for the United States Championship belt between Kofi Kingston defending that belt against Braun Strowman. Now, I know that we've got both of these guys as faces currently, but I still think that the Cruiser versus Giant as a matchup is going to be a pretty good show. I may also set it up so that Braun may switch to a heel, maybe cut a promo or something like that in our next show. We'll see how things work out. Next up is the very first promo for the show. We've got Alexa Bliss being featured. She is going to be doing a role change. I feel like she is going to be needed more as a face instead of a heel for WCW, and that's where I want to put her at. Our first mid-card match of the show is going to be between Dexter Loomis versus Damian Priest. I'm doing this to set up a rivalry between the two. I think that could be very interesting. Plus, I'm also setting it up since Dexter is part of a tag team with Dragunov. I want to set up Damian Priest as a tag team with someone else. I just don't know who yet. And this is going to play towards that story that I'm going for. Our second promo of the show is going to see Rhea Ripley coming to the ring. She's going to be shooting a self-promo. That's going to satisfy Triple H Commissioner goal of that to get us that power card right there. Our second mid-card of the show is going to be a tag team match for the tag team women's championship belt between Zelina Vega and Zoe Stark versus Zia Lee and Valhalla. We're going to go ahead and set up that rivalry like right now and get that going. Promo number three is going to be Ivy now coming out. She's going to be calling out Rhea Ripley. We're going to go ahead and get this rivalry going. I think that'll be a pretty good rivalry right there. We'll see how things shake up in that. And ladies and gentlemen, our main event of the evening is going to be Finn Balor versus Karrion Cross for the world for the WCW World Heavyweight Belt. This, I think, is going to be a great show right there. All right, Seattle, Washington is going to be welcoming WCW back. Our match cards are set. Our logistics is set. The show will be costing us $15,500. The booking is confirmed. 
Alrighty guys, this is how I plan on doing things. This is how the shows are going to be ran and the episodes are going to be done. Alright, I've been watching some of the other YouTube channels and how they are running their My GM shows. And it probably works for them on how they're doing it. And I don't know, I may need to change things up and, and do it the way that they do it as well. It just depends on what you guys like and how the views and stuff are as well as I'm going to be reading your feedback and comments. But what I'm noticing is that they just simulate all the shows instead of actually like having the matches play out and i think it needs a little bit more action i think you guys actually want to see the fights i don't know maybe i'm wrong i personally think that would be better so that's how i'm going to do it i'm going to simulate the shows but we're going to spectate it my plan starting out anyway is that we are going to simulate the shows but we are going to be spectating the simulation now i considered playing them out but then that runs into the issue where I pretty much have an idea who's going to win. It's going to be whichever person I'm playing at that time. And I want the surprise of not knowing. I want to see how things play out. So what I'm going to be doing is just letting the matches play. We're going to spectate those matches. That way the story that I'm trying to tell is just constantly evolving and even I don't know how it's going to go. Now, if you guys don't actually want to watch the show itself, like the actual fight, then I'm going to put timestamps on the video so you can kind of cut through and, and go to the next section to make it easier just to get through the video. Uh, that's, again, just in case you guys don't want to watch that, but I don't know. It's going to make for a longer video, but I think it's going to make for a better show because we're going to have some action in it. So without further ado, let's start the first match. We've got Kofi defending his title against Braun Strowman. Who is going to win this David versus Goliath match? Let's find out together. The monster of all monsters is here. I'll tell you this much, the monster of all monsters is more than just a nickname. This monster has stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with every giant in WWE and slain them all. He may have seen it all, but Kofi Kingston always presents a new challenge. As exuberant as ever. Uh, Kofi only has one move. Beyond the fun and games, Kofi Kingston has the true heart of a champion. That's because Kofi never gives up, always believes in himself. And the fans share that belief. They feel Kofi can accomplish anything. Well, Byron, I can't say they've been wrong. Kingston has done amazing things. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WCW United States Championship. Introducing the challenger from Sheryl's Ford, North Carolina, weighing in at 385 pounds, Braun Strowman. And his opponent from Ghana, West Africa, Weighing in at 212 pounds, 
the WCW United States Champion, Kofi Kingston. A title coveted by legends and hungry young talent alike. Here's one of the most entertaining superstars around. While it might be songs and dances to the ring, Kofi Kingston is off business once that bell sounds. It's that exuberant nature that often throws Kofi's opponents off their game. You can never underestimate the literal heights Kofi is willing to go to to secure the victory. We'll see if Kofi's opponent has come to the ring prepared for what we all know he's capable of. And guys, ever since its inception in 1975, the United States Championship has been one of the most prestigious prizes in all of sports entertainment. Leg breaker, that had to hurt. Sharp knee. Kofi just taunting his opponent now. He's stalking his opponent from the top turnbuckle. Launching. Timing leg drop. Is it enough? And he breaks the count quickly. Not getting a two count at this point has to be frustrating. He got whipped into that corner right in the chest. What a drop kick. And a well-executed move we just saw there. What a leg drop across the rope. A rare manhandling of Strowman here. Impressive string of attacks from Kofi here. Measured knee drop. That aggression of Strowman being met in kind. Oh my, what a splash! And Kofi knows it is game time right now. Oh, that might have just broken something. Lands harder. Great flurry of offense from Kofi. Raw is being completely neutralized. Basement drop kick. Oh, he's looking to completely render this leg useless. Stump puller leg snap. Very effective. He's back into the ring. And Kofi knows it is game time right now. Desperate attempt here to get back on his feet. Lift off. Look out below. And after that, you know things have just kicked up a notch. Pedal to the metal right now. Oh, SOS. And Kofi hitting that just proves there's no lack of focus from Kingston. This one is headed outside, guys. Down to Odin, and a double axe handle smash. A continuous attack on Strowman. You cannot deny Kobe Kingston right now. Back into the ring. are legal, so hopefully this will be a short trip outside. Taking a trip outside, but he's got to be mindful of the count. Okay, he's re-entering the ring. What power. What dominance. Braun Strowman. Oh, hellacious power slam. The champ odds look glazed over. Oh, the shoulder claw. Look at this. Agony and pain. And an impactful display of offense we just witnessed there. From the ring all the way to the floor. And he'll leave the ring for this next stretch. 
Fishing out a suplex. You can feel the ground shake with everything Strowman is doing. And the WWE Universe is being demoralized by Kofi's situation. Oh. A little oh. insult to your injury. Strong Whoa. kick. My goodness. He's begging him to get up so he can put him back down. From the top, counter, and now there's an opening. DDT plants that. Calls the pin off with a rope break. Kofi getting set. Could be one move from victory. Out of the way. Oh. Super kick. What a count. Incoming. Big top with a championship on the line. He gets the kick out after the one. Somehow still in this fight. Not down and out yet. Bang. Knee right on target. Ah, strike him with an A. And look at this power from the monster of all monsters. Monster slam. The title might change hands. States champion, Braun Strowman! An exciting match that concludes with a title changing hands. Become a champ like this, he is never going to forget this moment or feeling. What an absolutely amazing first match. I can't believe that the title actually changed hands over to Braun Strowman. Kofi had a strong showing right in the beginning, but in the end, he was just no match for the Titan that is Braun. So it looks like we have a brand new WCW United States Heavyweight Champion with Strowman. We ended up getting three stars on that match. That's that's pretty good start, I think. Pretty good start to the show, but let's see where else things go, and then we'll measure up to our competition and see how their shows went. Alexa, with her promo skill of five, had a pretty good showing right there, and she changed Rose from a heel to a face. Fantastic showmanship from our leading lady. Next up is our mid-card match. Damian Priest, before the show began, called out Dexter Loomis, saying that Dexter didn't belong in a ring. Loomis responded saying he would fight Priest anytime, anywhere, and the challenge was set for tonight. Is what Damian Priest claims correct? Or is Loomis going to mop the floor with Damien? Let's head ringside and watch how this battle unfolds. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Recluse, Wyoming. Weighing in at 230 pounds. One half of the WCW World Tag Team Champions, Dexter Lumis. A matchup like this, it's one that the locker room has wanted to see. It's one that the WWE Universe has wanted to see. It's one that I've been waiting to see, and it's about to go down. A victory tonight over Damian Priest, not only protects his career, but supercharges his superstar. Day 
from New York City, weighing in at 249 pounds, Senor Money in the Bank, Damien Priest. Damien Priest is dead set on growing his legacy, on bringing more and more glory to his name. And he's done just that, Cole. A modern-day bad guy picking fights and winning gold. But it's never enough for the power-hungry Damian Priest. With Priest in the ring, there's a sense of grim foreboding in the air. Yeah, knowing Priest is a safe bet that this thing's gonna get violent. He's not gonna hold anything back. We have Dexter Loomis here, a superstar who is so unpredictable, there's no way of knowing what's going through his mind right now. I can't deny that Dexter Loomis is on the peculiar side. Loomis doesn't say much, but he's proven to be a feared entity. And with good reason. Even in a sanctioned match, you don't know where Loomis will come from or how he will strike. And he has to be cautious taking on someone like Damian Priest. One of the most destructive forces on the WWE roster. Priest has been on an absolute warpath since landing in WWE. And I don't see him slowing down anytime soon. Getting set up for something in the corner. And Loomis saw it coming. These two battling to a dead heat with these reversals. Good golly, what a knee. Elbow drop right on point. Looking for a high risk from the top. Oh, elbow drop. Piercing elbow. Completely flattened, and that should do it. That has to do it. Getting that shoulder up seemed to be pretty easy. Whoa, not quite yet. Oh, leg lariat. Got him up. He's taking some good hits. Priest attacked with grim determination. And repeated impacts like that will weaken you mentally as much as it does physically. The Glam Slam! Oof! Will this be enough? And he powers out. Very close. Fatigue clearly set again. Well, it looks like Priest may have been correct about Dexter. Loomis did not have the showing that he was hoping to have tonight, especially for his first showing at WCW. And it looks like Damien may have gained a brand new nemesis and probably someone that I personally don't think you should have messed with, 
but time will tell on how this pans out. After her first mid-card, Rhea Ripley comes into center stage claiming that she is everything that WCW needs and that if anyone, she should be the women's champion. She went on to say that Alexa Bliss is coming out on the stage earlier this evening and talking about how she plans to be the face of the new company and hopefully the crowd forgives her for everything that she's done previously is just Bliss showing weakness. Weakness that she's got to capitalize on. Sounds to me like Rhea may be after the women's title belt. Our third match of the evening is going to be an exciting one, I believe. We've got the very first tag team match for our WCW brand. It is Zoe Stark and Zelina Vega versus Zia Lee and Valhalla. Will Zelina and Zoe be able to work together long enough to hold off Zaya and Valhalla, or will Zaya and Valhalla be taking that belt home tonight? The consummate underdog of the women's division, Zelina Vega. Zelina, one of the smallest competitors with the biggest heart. Yeah, now Zelina is sitting under the learning tree of Rey Mysterio and the rest of the LWO. Zelina will really have the chance to break out even further. Zelina looking to make the LWO and her family proud tonight. One of the top names in women's independent wrestling, Zoe Stark. Now looking to prove herself in WWE. I love Zoe Stark's energy and love of competition. Well, there's no accounting for taste, but she has proven it by capturing the NXT Women's Tag Team titles. She calls herself undeniable. Well, it's time to prove it. I have every bit of confidence that she will. Zia Lee is not here to make friends. She is here to compete. One of a kind in this division is a vicious, dangerous martial artist and master of Wushu. She is more than ready to be the master of the squared circle. Zaya has an impressive martial arts background. Zaya certainly well versed in the art of combat. The protector has arrived. A 
a physical presence who has tapped into something feral and otherworldly. Bahala believes she is doing the God's bidding and won't stop until she succeeds. Born in the woods, raised in the mud, and now commanding the seas alongside the Viking Raiders. World traveled, powerful, and emboldened by the gods. A dangerous combination of skills and a competitor. But this isn't a competition for Valhalla. It's more like a hunt. The following contest is a tag team match set for one fall and is for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. Introducing the challengers, the team of Zaylee and Valhalla. And their opponents, the team of The WWE Women's Tag Titles have quickly risen to prominence. Big opportunity here to claim the Women's Tag Team Championships in this tag team matchup. We're in the ring now with Zelina Vega and Zoe Stark. And standing across from them, it's a very tough test with Zia Lee and Valhalla. The champs are not going down without a fight, but the challengers really seem ready for the challenge tonight. I think it's going to be a dugout brawl on another level because neither of these teams want to go home without the title. She is just desperately trying to fight out of it. She responds with a counter. Ouch. Lifted into the finest carry. Launched into a roundhouse kick. She gets the tag. Knee strike connects. Oof. Boom. Able to get the advantage here. She's pushed into the corner. It's about to get worse for this superstar. Or wait a minute. We're about to see an upgrade in the physicality here. These two athletes exchanging blows on the ropes. Elbows now over and over again. Just punishing. Now what? Any move from the top like that is nearly catastrophic. Tag. Here she comes. Bang. Vicious boot. Taking out the knee. What a forearm. Roundhouse kick. Man. The hit's adding up a little on the champ. And Valhalla making it clear there that the hunt is officially on. Zoe Stark flexing some muscle for the fans out there. Uh-oh. What an elbow drop. Covered by the challenger. She overcomes the pinfall attempt. Not even a near fall there. A oh, double face buster. Side headlock applied. Oh, good measure. champion was unable to return fire. Double underhook suplex. Stark can't stop this string of offense. I can't dispute Valhalla's strategy right now. She catches Valhalla with a counter. What is she concocting? Well-delivered suplex. Tag is made.
Fantastic. Agility like that, easier said than done, gentlemen. Check your face after that one. Uses the edge of the knee. Bahala got met with some ruthlessness that time. Zelina proving too much to handle with that. Ah, stops to legs. Looking to take flight here. She's got her where she wants her. Flying. Diving Hurricanrana. Whoa! Momentum is completely shifted to Zelina. The Valhalla withstand this surge. Just extending parts that don't extend. Tagging her partner in. soon here. Hold on, she could be looking for a submission move here. Trapped and nowhere to go. Except for maybe the emergency room or the locker room. This is gonna be bad. Perhaps thinking something else here. Not sure why though, Michael. She seemed to have it really cinched in. She shoots up the top rope. Dangerous thinking. She's getting back to her feet, but is there fight left? Blast off. <laughs> Tag. Oh, disabling the leg with that. The challenger's hopes are slipping away. There is no way this can go on for much longer. Stop to the leg. We all know what she's looking to do next. Using the ropes as a launching pad. Oh, the high risk doesn't pay off. That was an absolutely haphazard, uncalculated risk. And I have no doubt they're going to pay dearly for it. Look at this. Boom. The team of Zelina Vega and Zoe Star. And a big time victory for this tag team here tonight. That's about as perfect an example of tag team wrestling you're ever likely to see. You know, I gotta say, that match turned out not as great as I expected. It was over with pretty quick. And we only got an okay rating on that. It seems to me as though Zoe and Zelina, just when they came to play, didn't come prepared. This was also Zaya and Valhalla's first time together as a tag team, and they didn't really seem to work well together. It seems like for the most part, Zaya didn't really spend a whole lot of time in the ring and left it pretty much up to Valhalla to fend for herself. Though Zelina and Zoe didn't have the momentum in the beginning, they quickly picked it up and were able to defend their tag team titles. 
I'm pretty sure though, if Zion Valhalla had just been a little bit more cooperative, this could have totally went the opposite direction. And those belts would be in the hands of new owners tonight. I'm not sure what Zelina was thinking. She clearly had to see Zoe going for that ringside move, jumping off the rope when she picked up Valhalla and things just went totally wrong at that point. That could have cost them the match right there. And I'm sure they're gonna be having a chat about that later on. Next, we had one of our backstage correspondents catch up with Ivy Nile, who apparently was not happy about Rhea coming out and saying that she was the best that WCW had to offer in the women's champions. And she personally called out Rhea saying that she would take her on anytime, anywhere. No word yet on Rhea Ripley's response to that challenge, but she's definitely not one to back down from anything. So we'll see how that pans out soon. And now, the moment you guys have been waiting for, it is the main event, a title match with Finn Balor defending his heavyweight championship against Karrion Cross. Which one of these brutal athletes is going to be taking home that belt tonight? Let's head ringside as the match is about to begin. Goosebumps spreading through the WWE Universe as the sinister and menacing presence of Karrion Cross fills the air. Incredible strength, expert submissions, and devastating strikes. There is no safety when you're in the ring with Karrion Cross. looking to reach that next level in WWE tonight might be the moment of truth. Just a prelude to the unrelenting attack we are about to see from Karrion Cross. comes Finn Balor, one of the most talented competitors around with a darker edge than ever. club has been disbanded the only support this man needs is from his family in the judgment day i hate to agree with you on this corey but you're right valor has never been more dangerous more competitive more successful than he's been with the judgment day he added the undisputed tag titles to his resume as part of the judgment day and valor's leadership has brought championship glory to every member of the group and the Prince has also taken his rightful spot back in the main event picture 
where he so rightfully belongs. Like him or not, Balor is still an extraordinary man, and we're about to see some extraordinary things. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. And is for the WCW Heavyweight Championship. Introducing the challenger from Sin City, weighing in at 265 pounds, Karrion Cross. And his opponent from Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland, weighing in at 190 pounds, the WCW Heavyweight Champion Finn Balor. Look at the adjective championship. WCW was the biggest competitor to WWE for nearly two decades, even eclipsing WWE's popularity for a long time. So winning a WCW-branded title is a big deal. Well, they called it where the big boys play for a reason. To be a champion in WCW meant you were among the best in the world. You're right, except for the times that that movie star and the writer won the title. Otherwise, it's pretty much been the best of the best. And did you hear the impact of that? More power moves like that, we could be looking at a new champ in no time, gentlemen. Oh, just gouging the face. Face gouge. Oh, God. There was no issue with that attack. Hey, sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures. Who are we to judge? Oh, look at this ruthlessness in the bottom turnbuckle. Drops the hammer right on the lower back. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Followed by a forearm smash. So much damage inflicted. And an overbearing amount of offense against Croc. First up top. A diving knee drop for the title. A close count for the challenger. Close call. That was almost lights out. them right where they want them into the corner now this is a textbook example of how to bend the rules using the forearm to their advantage so come on now so i guess that's what it means to do whatever it takes to stay champion oh look at this ruthlessness in the bottom turnbuckle champ's got the pen to retain gets his shoulder up before the two count these men knew this match is going to be hard fought And now the gears are really turning for Balor. Yeah, and this offense from Balor is just too much for Cross. He heads outside, count outs legal in this match. Hoist it up and, oh, 1916. Purposeful aggression in every inch of that maneuver from Balor. Uh, pressing their foot right into the gut, that's gotta hurt. right to the gut added pressure afterwards Ugh. he gets back into the ring where's Finn going now he's got to know he's in harm's way here to the sky what? the one two punch of high risk high reward and Cross can't find an answer for these attacks Finn is reaching that other level Cross fires back. Karrion finally creates some more offense for himself. Maybe he's found a new source of aggression to battle back with. Big 
Smith drop kick. some big trouble. Not what you want to see by any means. Connecting with a sharp elbow. Uh-oh. Fighting back by the counter. Jerry and Cross, watch this power. F-10 face buster. Now a pin for the championship. The champ kicks out with authority. Still has a great amount of fight in them. Not going to let it end like this. There's some power behind that punch. Ball from the rope. ends up defending his title against Karrion Cross, mostly just because it didn't seem like Karrion Cross brought his A game to the ring and the crowd noticed it and they were highly disappointed in that. And you know what? I can't blame them. Finn just absolutely dominated Karrion in this match. There was a glimmer of hope there for a little bit that Karrion might actually pull this off and get the title belt. But in the end, it was Baylor's ruthless aggression that led to him holding on to that title. But it does seem as though a rivalry is forming right now between these two warriors of darkness. Let's take a look at the post shows reports to see how we compared to the other brands right now. So taking a look here, we did have a poor finale. Our main event match was overshadowed by a more entertaining mid card, leaving fans disappointed at the end. And if we had swapped those two matches, would have created a more satisfying finish for your show. But you know what? I really thought having a title match at the end right there between those two would really do it. And it just didn't pay off. Perhaps, though, we can kind of flesh out this rivalry story between Karrion Cross and Finn. And then just kind of see where that goes in further shows along the line. Let's take a look at the other two shows bookings and see how that went. SmackDown opened their show with a match between Gunther and Channing Stax Lorenzo for that three stars. Their two mid cards looks like it was Nikki Cross versus Ronda Rousey with a tag team matchup of Josh Briggs and Tony D'Angelo versus Jimmy Uso and Ludwig Kaiser. That's a strange tag team couple right there if I'd ever seen one. And their main event was a tables, ladders, chairs championship match with Big E versus, seriously, Logan Paul. And uh, it looks like Logan ended up taking home that belt there. So that is definitely not a match that I would have been interested in at all. Uh, in case you guys haven't noticed, I, I hate Logan Paul. I, I can't stand him. I can't stand the fact that he's even on WWE. But that's beside the point. We're not going to brand about that today. 
Raw started out their show with a tag team match between Asuka and Bayley versus Shayna and Gigi Dolan. I, I don't know who Gigi Dolan is. Uh, I saw her in the ads for the game, but I can't say that I've ever seen her actually on a show. So I'm not sure on that one. Their two mid cards was R-Truth versus Eric and Seth freaking Rollins versus Giovanni Vinci. Looks like their main event was a title match between Jey Uso versus Omos, the giant. That's a match I personally would love to watch. So it looks like SmackDown did tie us with three stars for their opener and Raw only got a two star opener on that. So we did kind of do better than Raw. SmackDown also dominated their first mid card with a 2.5 stars. That's not a lot of stars, but it's still better than our 1.5 we got and the 2.0 that Raw got. For the second mid card, it looks as though we also tied once again with SmackDown for two and a half stars with Raw coming in at two stars. So that pretty much played out exactly the same as the opener. The main event is where things differed. I only got one and a half stars on that with that disappointing match between Finn and Karrion Cross. I think if one of those had been a heel and the other one had been a face, I think that probably would have been a better matchup and the fans probably would have enjoyed that a lot more. But it's, it wasn't the story that I was trying to tell there. Raw's main event, however, was the J versus Omos and only got two and a half stars, which I personally think would be a better show than what SmackDown did here with Big E versus Logan Paul. But apparently the fans in this game have disagreed and they really like to see Logan and Big E go at it. Most likely that's going to be a rivalry right there that they are going to capitalize on over at SmackDown. And this is how things pretty much panned out for us at the end of the show. We picked up about 32,569 fans right there and we gained a profit of $46,639. Gains are better than losses, so all in all, I don't think it was that bad of a show. Taking a look over on social media, let's see what the fans are saying. It looks like Valhalla and Zaya seem to be an incredible tag team. Not sure if I feel the same way. I think they look great together as a tag team and they kind of match, but I don't know. They just didn't seem to have it together for that. And it looks like Rhea actually responded over on social media about Ivy's call out. Intense trash talk from Ivy now, leaving the crowd speechless and laughing and yawning. Ooh. At Royal Street for Life says Finn Baylor is just too good. Nobody's taken away his championship. You know what? I agree with that. And Dead Cyborg 87 says Lumos versus Damian Priest was rough. Their wrestling classes don't fit each other at all. I actually thought it was a pretty good matchup and that I matched those rows pretty well, but maybe I missed something. Looks like SmackDown beat us out on the fans with a plus of 49,400 but they took a profit loss of negative $6,771. And Raw looks like it picked up the most chart here with 39,499 fans, which fell short of what SmackDown got. However, it was better than what we did. Looks like they also beat us on profits as well with a plus to $54,382 on that. All in all, in my personal opinion, I think they had the best show there. We successfully accomplished the commissioner's goal this week, giving us the Get Schooled 3 power card. Looks like we also got another power card by completing the seasonal challenge Greenbacks, giving us pre-match physio. Reduces the probability that a superstar will become injured in a match. That could be useful later on. We also completed the seasonal challenge Rags to Riches, giving us homecoming. Select a contracted superstar on our brand to become a permanent superstar for the brand only usable on unbooked superstars with contracts. And this is the way the rankings have all shaked out. Looks like Ted DiBiase and SmackDown go to the number one spot up there. Adam Pierce with Raw is the number two spot and we came in dead last at number three. It's all good though, we'll work on things and we will have a much better show in week two. All right, and that's going to end this episode of my GM mode here on Phoenix Plays channel. I hope you guys enjoyed the booking that I set up with the matches. Some of them didn't pan out the way that I really wanted them to, but all in all, I really thought it was a good card. I also hope that you guys enjoyed the kind of a little bit of storytelling that I kind of injected into it. These types of videos is something I've never really done before, so I'm still trying to figure things out and what works and what doesn't. Also in that regard, let me know in the comments down below what you think about actually simulating and spectating the shows versus just simulating them and just showing the results. Now, me personally, I think doing it with the shows and, and doing the spectating works best. However, if you guys 
don't appreciate that, I can see about a different way of doing that. And maybe you guys have some thoughts on that. I'll definitely be looking forward to reading the opinions of you all. Now, my plan is to try to do four different videos on this a week. And then on Saturday or Sunday, we're going to do that fifth show, which is the PLE. Since we're already coming up on that first weekend, I'm going to schedule these things a little further apart than what I normally would. So you can look forward to the next episode in a couple of days. And then by next Saturday, we'll have the premium live event, Hell in a Cell, ready. So until the next video, I have been your host, Chris Phoenix. Thanks for watching. Wherever you guys are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And I hope to see you at the next show.